Hey everyone, welcome to the Red Porcupine podcast. My name is Rochelle Stain. Today we are exploring consciousness and the mystery of human nature through the remarkable, infamous star Algol in the constellation of Perseus. Every year on the 31st of May in the greater Cape Town area, Algol rises as the heliacal rising star with the sun after completing its journey through the underworld. The heliacal rising star was the star considered by the Egyptians to ride in the fiery boat of the sun god Ra, and thus it was considered that the star ruled the calendar days until the next star took over the seat in the boat of the sun. Algol is a binary eclipsing star, the second brightest in the constellation of Perseus, Beta per se. Our ancestors called Algol the demon star and Ras al Ghul because of its naked eye visible blinking every two days, 20 hours and 49 minutes. This regular change in the star's brightness and color was experienced as ominous and supernatural by the ancients. Let's look at exactly where Algol is. So once again, this is the sky map in starlight. This is the horizon. This is the equator or part of the equatorial grid. And this is the ecliptic. The pink is the ecliptic line. And you can see the sun is always on the ecliptic. This is the apparent path of the sun. So the sun is here on the horizon, sunrise, and here is Algol. And here you can see the constellation of Taurus. Remember the constellation of Taurus is very different to tropical Taurus. This area here is the tropical Taurus, and this is the constellation of Taurus. Two different things. We can see that Alcyone, you can see here's Mercury, how far it is from the apparent path of the sun, the ecliptic. So Alcyone was pretty close to the ecliptic. This was Alcyone here. But this is Algol. And you can see that Algol is not anywhere near the ecliptic in the constellation of Perseus. This is a map of the planets and luminaries and asteroids and all other bodies in the solar system on the ecliptic. Here is Mercury in the middle of tropical Taurus. And here is Mercury, 15 degrees, middle of tropical Taurus. And here is Sun on, in tropical Gemini. And here is the Sun. Here is the horizon. This is the ascendant. This is the rising point. The sun comes from below and rises. So here, 9 degrees 33 in Gemini, tropical Gemini. If we want to put Algol on this map, then we need to project the position of Algol onto the ecliptic, the path of the sun. So this is late Taurus. And here we can see the same for Alcyone. Here's Alcyone over here. And so that is on the cusp of tropical Taurus and tropical Gemini. Mythology, myth, contains in fictional form or symbolic form the wisdom of human nature. When we are trying to understand the mythology, the symbolism, we have to remember that these kind of myths evolve and, and just like history, where whoever rules at a certain time rewrites or there's a cultural appropriation, a borrowing that takes place. And there's a slow evolution of a myth to the point where the myth becomes unrecognizable from its original form. So it's quite an art and an archaeological dig to be able to excavate the most original form in order to determine its symbolism. 
I'm reading now from this website, secretsofplato.com, who is Medusa in Greek mythology. Medusa, a prominent figure in ancient Greek mythology, gave the word petrify meaning to turn to stone. That's because she petrified her victims, literally, and her famous face continues to live on in popular culture. Think Versace. Medusa was born as the only mortal to an otherwise immortal family. Her parents were minor sea gods, and she and her two sisters were known as the Gorgons, women, or rather monsters, with hissing snakes for hair, who could turn passers-by to stone with a simple glare. But they weren't always this way. Medusa was once a beautiful young woman, that is, before she managed to anger the goddess Athena. Like many of the ancient Greek myths, Medusa's story begins with a rape, and not just any rape, but one committed by a mighty god. Poseidon, god of the sea, laid eyes on the young Medusa and became enamored by her beauty. In fact, her beauty was so widely known that even Athena was envious of her. According to Ovid, Poseidon couldn't resist himself, and so he raped Medusa in the sacred temple of Athena, which infuriated the goddess of wisdom when she found out about it. As is typical of ancient Greek myth, the goddess took her fury out on the victim rather than the aggressor. As punishment for Medusa's transgression, Athena turned her into a monster with living venomous snakes on her head. Then she cursed her gaze. Anyone the Gorgon encountered and laid eyes on from then on would turn to stone. Medusa's name is most closely associated with one hero of ancient Greek myth, a certain Perseus. Who is this hero, you might be wondering? Well, if you've ever seen the famous image of Medusa's head severed from her body, you can thank Perseus for that. At the behest of the king, Perseus set out to kill the monster and return her head to him as a gift. He embarked for Medusa's lair on the island of Sopidon, somewhere in the Aegean, with favors from the, from the gods, the invisible cloak of Hades and the winged boots of Hermes. Perseus had to be extremely cautious, most especially because Medusa could turn him to stone with a single glance. So he endeavored to behead the Gorgon in her sleep and he succeeded in doing so. Then Perseus used Medusa's head for his own gains. He petrified his enemies with it and rescued Andromeda, a certain Ethiopian princess who would go on to become his wife, from the terrifying sea monster. Finally, the hero returned Medusa's head to Athena, who placed it on her shield. Medusa's story thereby came full circle, beginning and ending in tragedy. Rape, an awful curse, and her eventual beheading. The head of Medusa has come to symbolize the warding off of evil. Medusa's severed head has been interpreted in various ways, but at its core it symbolizes darkness, terror, and the unknown. Medusa's power is undeniable. The mere glance at her face would turn anyone or anything into stone. Her head therefore stands as a reminder of fear and mortality that transcends place and time. Despite Medusa's reputation for being a fearsome figure, academics over the years has, have reconceptualized her story and championed Medusa as an agent for justice who was able to stand up against powerful forces. Medusa has also been seen as a symbol of female power, representing both beauty and strength. Her story teaches us that no one is completely invincible and brings a sense of understanding to why we shouldn't always be in control of our own destiny. Lilith is a figure in Mesopotamian and Judaic mythology, theorized to be the first wife of Adam, that's Adam and Eve, Adam, and supposedly the primordial she-demon. Lilith is cited as having been banished from the Garden of Eden for not complying with and obeying Adam. Lilith owned her sexuality. She was orgasmic. She loved sex and she had sex for pleasure. Not duty, not children, pleasure. 
This is how Brady looks at El Gol, and this is taken, the bones of this are taken from starlight. El Gol was called Ras al Ghul by the Arabs, which means the head of the demon, and they considered this female demon to be the wife of the devil. Ptolemy labeled the star as the bright one of those in the Gorgon's head. The Chinese called the star Touche, meaning piled up corpses. In Talmudic law, this is the first wife of Adam, Lilith, who left him because she refused to be submissive to his needs. Lilith then fled paradise and became a demon of the wind. She was considered a curse as she contained sexual pleasure and was the cause of all men's wet dreams. The resulting impact in the Jewish, Muslim and Christian cultures was the suppression, the domestication in the male of all sexual pleasure, accompanied in some cultures by rituals of male circumcision, which then led to the suppression, the devaluation or the demonization of the sexual woman, which was accompanied in some cultures by rituals of cutting off the clitoris. And both the clitoris and the foreskin are the source of male and female sexual pleasure. Algol thus embodied everything that men feared in the feminine, which was the power of the feminine sexuality. And the result of this, you're losing your mind, you're losing your head, you lose your reason and ra rationality as a result. Algol is not the mother face of the goddess, but rather the passionate lover or the whore. She is female kundalini energy. This star contains immense female passion and power. It is the power of the feminine or the potential power of mother nature, strong but not to be called evil. This star symbolizes a strong consuming passion which may devour you with anger and rage if shamed and suppressed. Algol is also the wild, raw, frightening face of the outraged feminine which has been devalued, demonized, disfigured, mutilated and labeled as demonic or simply as evil. If one can contain Brady says, an unconscious compulsion to take revenge and focus that passion into a more productive outcome, Algol is one of the most powerful stars in the sky. Brady also says, looking for clues, whatever planet it affects in your chart will be charged with strong, intense sexual energy that has the potential to be wonderful or if shamed and or suppressed or repressed can lead to rage or violence if your heliacal rising star is algol or if algol is on your angles at birth or if algol is in paran in relationship to one of your planets or luminaries then this energy of algol will be turned up for you and the symbolism will be especially relevant. So let's look at what Bernadette Brady on star and starlight has to say about the heliacal rising star of Algol. And this is led by one's passions to create or destroy. This is the star that has been walking the path of the underworld and has now emerged to be visible in the world of humans. This star, the Heliacal Rising Star, is the star that you were born under and it will bear gifts to you from the land of your past, your family and your genetics. It is your gift, the jewel or the treasure which your ancestors handed you at birth. This star is a theme in your life, helps to build your philosophies and can at time take on a vocational pulse. Being born on the on the day that Algol is in such an important position, your being will be inflamed with his passion and intensity. At the very least, this will imply that you are a person who will not tolerate injustice. In addition, because you can handle intensity, you will encounter these sorts of situations throughout your life, either suffering personal injuries or fighting for what you feel is correct. 
Elgol as your life beacon will lead you upon an emotional and intense path. And if Elgol is on your angles, with Elgol on the angles at the moment of your birth, then the passion and intensity of the star is linked into your everyday life, your lifestyle. This implies that by attitude or action, fighting against injustice is an almost daily event for you. In addition, because you can handle intensity, you will encounter or seek out strong emotional situations throughout your life, fighting for what you feel is correct and just, and quite often linking yourself to the causes of women and or children. And Algol in Paran with your son, Algol in Paran with your son indicates that you are seen as a person who is passionate to the point of destruction. Your passion and intensity will know no limits. All of Algol's passion and intensity is combined with your sun, which symbolizes how you define yourself and how you see others. If the star is active in your youth, then your father figure is the intense role model who experiences tragedy or drama in some manner. If Algol is adult active in your adult years, then your actions, your profession or your lifestyle contain the passionate blood of Algol. So those three applications of the Algol symbolism to the rising, the angles and the sun have a really good idea of how we work with Algol in our lives. If we look at the live players, none of the 10 in my sample have Algol as a heliacal rising star, setting star. A on the angles, if we look at Algol, we see that Gary Kasparov has Algol in Paran with his moon. We see that Muhammad VI, the king of Morocco, has Algol with Mars and Jeff Bezos, Algol with Jupiter. So only three of the live players. If we look at the non-live players or the dead players, the control sample, there's no Algol as rising, setting or on angles. And then if we look at Algol in Paran, we see that Donald Trump has an Algol moon. Mark Zuckerberg has an Algol Mars. So also a very low presence of Algol. This morning, 31st of May, was a wet and overcast morning. I didn't see the sunrise on the horizon this morning. It only briefly peeped through the clouds on my way down the mountain. With my new sunrise viewing place and no sun as my reference, I battled to fix Algol to the horizon landscape as it rose. I also had calibration challenges on Skyview, which brought into question the reliability of the app, so I need to do more research on that. Starlight lists the first date Elga will be visible in the morning before sunrise as 15th of June, plus or minus five days before or five days after. I'm looking forward to seeing Elga with my very own eyes. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If so, like, subscribe and share. I'm looking forward to our next heliacal star rise, which is on the 19th of June, the star Al Nut in the constellation of Taurus. Until then, keep your feet on the ground and your eyes on the stars.